what drug is over the counter and is abused? The drug is dextromethorphan. What's going on here? This drug is used to block coughs. It's used in a mixture of drugs, uh, Robitussin, Coracetin, Desilin. It is used as a, a cold medication and they put dextromethorphan in the cold medication with other drugs to block the cough. What would be the reason this drug is abused? Dextromethorphan is the D-isomer. It's an analog of codeine. Codeine is an opiate. So dextromethorphan was created from codeine in the 1950s. It's been around a long time. Like codeine, it blocks cough by affecting an opiate receptor, the sigma-1 opiate receptor. It's an agonist at that receptor. So by stimulating an opiate receptor like codeine, like morphine, it blocks cough. Opiates are very effective. Drugs which are morphine-like or heroin-like are very good at blocking cough. Okay, so why would it be used? Yes, high doses of this drug can stimulate that sigma one receptor and give you a little euphoria but that's i really doubt that's the reason the normal dose is 30 milligrams every six to eight hours max 120 milligrams a day so if you take 100 to 200 milligrams at once you get a little euphoria from that opiate effect but that's not the reason the reason people take it this is what my patients the name they've given it called robotripping, taking robitussin and robotripping. It's because it affects a glutamate receptor and methyl D aspartate re receptor. You know what else does that? Ketamine. Remember special K? The K hole. When you take as ketamine and block the N methyl D aspartate receptor, you hallucinate, you dissociate, <coughs> you start getting all these. Um, distortions of reality and movement of things. Things, the floor starts moving, your body parts start morphing, and you start hallucinating. This is the reason I think people are abusing dextromethorphan. It's also called the poor man's PCP, phenylcyclidine. Yes, it can cause an agitation, a dissociation, hallucination, manic, hyperactivity, restlessness, um, there's more. So it affects that opiate sig sigma-1 receptor. It affects that glutamate receptor like ketamine, S-ketamine, K-hole, that whole PCP-like effect, but also it affects serotonin. It causes a, a buildup of serotonin. It blocks the serotonin pump. So you get a lot of side effects now with that serotonin reuptake inhibition and norepinephrine. So now we see why it's abused because you, you hallucinate, you get a little euphoria from the opiate, but the downside is you get a lot of GI problems, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, elevations of blood pressure, low blood pressure, agitation, psychosis, um, People become disorganized and start talking ridiculous things and making no sense, impairments in reality. They're all over the place. So I, I worked the emergency room for many years, 20 plus years. And I've had people come in who've taken overdoses of dextromethorphan. They call it robo-tripping, triple C's, blah, blah, blah. And so what we do is we have to deal with, a lot of times they're agitated. So they go to school one day, and it's mostly younger people. I would say under 18. It's not that good of a high. I mean, you, you, I wouldn't recommend doing this. I just don't see the, the attraction here, but they come in and they just become unmanageable. They, they, they just start talking gibberish, psychotic, hallucinating, and the teachers at school send them or their parents send them. What's wrong with them? The treatment is, I use... Uh, High potency, low dose antipsychotics, one milligram twice a day of Respiradol or two to three milligrams of Haldol 
couple doses. I give them a little uh, short-acting Ativan, benzodiazepine, just to calm them down and put them to sleep sometimes with a little quetiapine Seroquel. The half-life of the drug is anywhere between two and six hours. So the whole thing should end in 12 hours. Most of them are, are ready to go within 12 hours. It's usually not fatal. Um, it's, the treatment is pretty easy. I've gotten everyone out of it within 12 hours. But, and my office is an outpatient doctor. Now it's pretty common that people take it because I think out of boredom and it's easy to get, so they take it. But that's the story behind dextromethorphan. Uh, a few side notes, this is in some over, this is in some prescription medications. There's uh, dextromethorphan and quinidine, uh, which is a blood pressure pill, and they mix it with dextromethorphan, and it's supposed to help suitor bulbar, uh, inappropriate laughter. Um, I think the quinidine raises the level of dextromethorphan, and, uh, I'm not sure of the mechanism, but that's supposed to help with people who laugh inappropriately. I've never had a patient like that, so I've never used this combination. There now is a mixture of an antidepressant bupropion mixed with dextromethorphan to uh, treat treatment-resistant depression, taking advantage of some of the mechanism of actions of the dextromethorphan. Remember, um, blocking that N-methyl diaspartate Receptor treats depression, like Spravato, esketamine, and the serotonin reuptake pump and some norepinephrine reuptake inhibition. That can treat depression. So they're trying to mix that with bupropion to potentiate its action, potentiate the levels of dextromethorphan. That's a new drug that might be coming. I don't know if the FDA is going to pass it, the mixture of dextromethorphan and bupropion. But anyway, that's just a little gist on um, one of the most abused over-the-counter drugs, dextromethorphan.